good morning students today i am going to discuss a new topic in the central nervous system infection that is about the rabies virus you must have heard about this terminology earlier in your uh, earlier classes like bite of the rabbit dog as well as hydrophobia all this this is a rna virus infection which mainly transmitted by the saliva or other secretion of the animal who is affected with the infection of this particular virus coming to the topic in detail rabies is a viral infection that is rapidly progressing acute infectious diseases of the central nervous system in humans and animals it is transmitted from other rabid animal other rabid animal and almost uh, the ending of this infection is fatal that means once the person get infected with the rabies the treatment is not possible usually it can be prevented earlier by the vaccination coming to the morphology of the virus so i told already it is a rna virus apart uh, comparing with the other viral infections this virus uh, has got a special symmetry in the capsid arrangement that is bullet shape so the size of the virus is almost 75 nanometer into 180 nanometer in length it is an enveloped virus and uh, the lipid envelope is having heme agglutinin peplomer spikes can be seen on the envelope the internal uh, the envelope is lined internally by a layer of matrix protein so this is the morphology it is a bullet shaped virus it is a special type of uh, capsid arrangement what we can see in this virus here you can see the diagram of the particular virus where the bullet shaped uh, shape is there and you can see the uh, glycoprotein spikes are there and the lipid layer is there capsid is there uh, matrix m protein is there then we can see the rna polymerase enzyme which is Uh, present along with the rna genome nucleocapsid protein all these things are there on the right side you can see the electron microscope picture of this particular virus coming to the major antigens of this virus it is a glycoprotein g which is these are peplomer spikes embedded in the envelope what i told already this glycoprotein g is species specific it binds to acetylcholine receptors in neural tissues which is the first step of pathogenesis of uh, rabies virus infection in the diagnostic part the antibody against this glycoprotein g is useful in the diagnosis in the patient serum in immunity it induces neutralizing antibodies which are protective in nature and uh, purified form of the antigen can be used as a subunit vaccine for the Uh, prevention of rabies in individuals coming to the nucleoprotein antigen these are capsid and uh, proteins associated with the viral rna and uh, group specific and it cross react with uh, that of rabies related viruses does not have any role in pathogenesis it this can be detected as a antigen in the immunofluorescent test antibody against this particular nucleoprotein is not protective it is does not have any use in vaccination there are two types of rabies viruses based upon the pathogenesis or the virulence factor which are produced one is the street virus and the second one is the uh, fixed virus so street virus is freshly isolated strains on the laboratory uh they mimic the wild viruses so long uh, and variable incubation periods and uh, produce intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies so the street virus is the pathogenic virus in nature and that is a uh, virus can produce intracytoplasmic inclusion they mimic the wild virus which is causing infection coming to the fixed virus when the street virus is propagated in in the rabbit by serial brain to brain passage 
they lose certain properties and become fixed virus so fixed virus is a laboratory grown variety uh, variant of the street virus this this particular street virus does not produce any uh, inclusion bodies do not multiply in extraneural tissues do not infect salivary gland but they multiply rapidly incubation period is shortened to 4 to 6 days so this is the two difference between uh, major difference between street virus and fixed virus so coming to the pathogenesis of this particular infection the rabies it is mainly transmitted by the bite or scratch from the infected animal with rabies rabid dog account for 99 percent of the cases so the household uh, the infection which is mainly transmitted by the dog bite that is more than 99 percent of cases other animals such as foxes raccoons shanks jackals mongoose which are wild carnivorous hosts they does not have a direct access to the human beings in the community so most of the time they these virus these animals does not involve in the infection coming to the next thing non bite exposures like direct contact with the saliva of infected animals with mucosa or fresh skin wounds that is the direct contact of saliva of the that is that is a account for non bite exposures inhalation of the virus containing aerosols in laboratory workers may be possible cornea or other organ transplantation is also possible for the infection to transmit so this is a diagram which is demonstrating how the virus is transmitted in the lower portion you can see the dog which is uh, carrying the virus in its saliva once it is multiplying uh, once it is biting the muscles there will be in the skeletal muscle this is the replicates and later the virus binds to acetylcholine receptors at a neuromuscular junction then they will go to the what uh, the nervous system then suddenly they will reach once they enter into the nervous system slowly they will go to the central nervous system brain and spinal cord so they will multiply in saliva ascend upwards reaches the brain and uh, disseminates to hippocampus and uh, cerebellum and eye etc this is the diagram which is showing how the virus is moving from lower muscles to the brain what are the clinical manifestations of this infection the incubation period is variable it may range from one week to 19 years so the incubation period is uh, depending upon the types of the wound produced and the extremity of the body where the dog is bitten and uh, how deep the dog bite has happened this all depends so the ultimate thing is the ability of the virus to reach into the central nervous system so depending upon the type of the wound produced the virus may multiply in the muscles and later they may enter into the uh, neurons then reaches the brain so incubation period inversely related to the distance of the virus to travel from the site of incubation inoculation to central nervous system hence it is usually shorter in children than in adults so in children the rabies infection may occur very fast because of the length is less bite on the head neck or upper limbs than legs so if a bite is occurred on the head neck or upper limb the infection chance is more because there is a direct entry into the brain short people also they may get infected very fast Coming to the incubation period that is continued, severe laceration which are occurring, presence of genetic predisposition in some persons, low host immunity, virus dose is more in the inoculum, then the virulence of the strain, all this will contribute to the clinical manifestations which is going to occur. So what are the different clinical spectrums? The rabies virus is usually undergo, oh, it is going through three different phases. First one is the proto prodromal phase acute neurological phase and the last one coma and death what is happening in the how we can do the laboratory diagnosis so in laboratory diagnosis it is uh, less important 
So how the laboratory diagnosis of this rabies is done? Laboratory diagnosis have a lesser role in the uh, what? treatment part because we cannot wait the uh, laboratory report to confirm the diagnosis uh, because it is an acute conditions where you will get the rabies. So antigen detection is one of the method what we can employ in the detection that is from hair follicle at the nape of the neck and from corneal smears by direct immunofluorescent test. Next we have got uh, the viral isolation by mouse inoculation or cell lines inoculation that is ne mouse neuroblastoma and uh, baby hamster kidney cells. Then coming to the laboratory diagnosis again, antibody detection is also having importance from the serum or from the CSF by different uh, antigen antibody reactions. Viral RNA detection can be done by RT-PCR. Negribody detection by isopathological staining of brain biopsies is possible that is mainly from the hippocampus for post-mortem diagnosis of rabies. This is the particular uh, inclusion body that is the negri body what you can see in the brain tissue of the animal that is done by hematoxin and eosin stain which is done. So the negri body is exclusive for the virus. So this particular thing which is seen in the uh, smear is important for the diagnostic purpose. How the treatment of the rabies is done? There is no specific treatment for rabies. When the person is uh, infected with the rabies, uh, the symptomatic treatment only is possible to prolong the life, but outcome is almost always fatal. Patient should be isolated in a quiet room, protected as far as possible from the external stimuli, bright light, noise, water or cold air which is can precipitate the spasm of the muscles. Sedatives and anti-anxiety drugs can be given, morphine can be used, hydration and urination should be properly maintained. What is the prognosis of this infection? Mortality rate of rabies is almost 100 patients. Preventable by administration of post exposure therapy during the early incubation periods. There are seven well documented cases who survived from rabies more, mostly because of taking rabies vaccine in the early incubation period. Prevention of human rabies, the WHO has uh, uh, guidelines released in the 2018 and rabies is prevented by providing prophylactic measures that include post-exposure prophylaxis and pre-exposure prophylaxis. So how we can do the post-exposure prophylaxis for individuals not received post-exposure or pre-exposure prophylaxis previously. So it is mainly by local wound care, rabies vaccine, rabies immunoglobulin which is given to the patient. So in local wound care, what is mainly happening? So here Local wound care, it is mainly by washing the area with soap and water. Rabies vaccine for active immunization can be given. The wound surface can be irrigated by rabies immunoglobulin to kill the entry of, the, uh, to prevent the entry of the virus into the muscles as well as nervous tissue. So how, this is the uh, table showing risky categorization and a recommended anti-rabies prophylaxis according to WHO 2018 guideline. So here the uh, risk of people are categorized into three groups as category 1, category 2 and category 3. Category 1 is no risk for less risk. Category 2 is having minor risk and category 3 people are having major risk. This is mainly depend upon the wound where it is uh, occurring or where the dog is biting on the body. So category 1, where touching or feeding of animal, licks on intact skin is possible. So here no treatment is recommended usually if there is no history of the rabies in the animal. Category 2 people include minor scratches or abrasions without bleeding or nibbing of uncovered skin. Wound management can be given, rabies vaccine you have to give, observe the dog for 10 days, if the dog is dying in 10 days, you have to send the uh, 
uh, postmortem sample of the dog for rabies detection. Category 3 people are at major risk. They got single or multiple transderma bites with oozing of blood, leaks on broken skin or mucous membrane uh, or otherwise direct contact with bats or wild animals. So they should do the wound management. Rabies immunoglobulin has to be uh, given on the wound surfaces. Rabies vaccine has to be given and uh, observe the dog for minimum 10 days. So local wound care include physical cleansing, chemical inactivation by using antiseptics, povidone iodine or alcohol can be used to inactivate the residual virus. Suturing is not recommended in the area where the dog bites is there because suturing will enhance the entry of the virus into the nervous tissue. So suturing should not be done on the dog bite. Other general measures include debridement of the devitalized tissues, tetanus prophylaxis, antibiotic treatment to prevent secondary bacterial infection. Do not touch the uh, wound with bare hand. Do not apply irritants like soil, oil or lime, herbs, chalk, betel, leaves, etc. This is a common practice followed in the village customs. So, rabies vaccine include types of the vaccine. They are cell line derived non-neural vaccine are recommended. Three vaccines are available. Purified chick embryo cell culture vaccine. Prepared from chicken fibroblast cell line. Purified viro cell vaccine that is PVC that is prepared from viro cell line. Human deployed cell that is HTC vaccine derived from WI38 human embryonic lung fibroblast cell line can be used. So roots of the vaccination include intradermal or intramuscular injections. Site is usually the deltoid area of the arm for adults and uh, the anterior area of the thigh for children aged less than 2 years. Never administrate in gluteal region. The fat present in the gluteal region may decrease the antigenicity of this particular vaccine. Dosage include 1 intradermal dose is 0.1 ml of the vaccine and 1 intramuscular dose is considered as an entire vial of vaccine irrespective of the vial size. Schedule of post exposure prophylaxis regimen, intradermal regimens are cost effective, dose sparing and time sparing, preferred over intramuscular regimen. Intradermal post exposure prophylaxis regimen include 222. The two site ID vaccine is given on day 0, 3, and 7. Intramuscular post exposure prophylaxis regimen include total four doses are given, two scheduled are available. One site intramuscular vaccine days 0, 3 and 7 and the fourth dose between days 14 to 28 or two site intramuscular vaccine given on day 0, 1 uh, site intramuscular on day 7 and 21. Interchange changes in vaccine product or road during the same PUP course are acceptable if unavoidable to ensure PUP course completion. Rabies immunoglobulin, these are the antibody rich, immuno, uh, antibody rich serum which is uh, against the rabies, which provides passive immunization by neutralizing the virus on the open wound where the dog bite is happened. Only once you can apply as soon as possible, not beyond seven, seven, uh, 7 days after the first dose of vaccine. Preparation is usually human or equine sources there. Maximum dose is 20 international unit or 40 international units per kg body weight. The post exposure prophylaxis for individuals previously vaccinated include they need local wound care and accelerated vaccine regimen con consisting of the following one site intradermal vaccine given on day 0 3 or one site intramuscular vaccine given on day 0 or 3 or four site ID vaccine given on Day 0 only, left and right deltoid, thigh or supra scapular areas. Post pre exposure prophylaxis can be given to the person who is having occupational hazards like veterinarians or dog handlers, subpopulations in remote endemic areas where dog, this one 
wild animals are biting the village dogs pre exposure prophylaxis regimen can be given on individuals of all ages schedule two schedules are available two site intradermal vaccine given on day 0 and 7 one site intramuscular vaccine vaccine given on day 0 and 7 both the dose can be given life provide life long protection but no need to take any both the dose pre periodically what is the epidemiology seed infection it is a enzootic enzootic and epizootic disease both wild and domestic animals infected dog source is 99% already we told it virus present in saliva from 3 to 4 days before the onset of symptoms till the death of the dog age although all ages are infected children are at a greater risk because of the lower lung in the dogs the rabies can be of two forms that one is the furious rabies or mad dog syndrome dumb rabies or paralytic uh, rabies so in dog also the incubation period varies from 3 weeks to 8 years control of rabies in dogs the most logical and cost effective approach to for control of urban rabies is elimination of the stray dogs and mass immunization of at least 80% of the dogs in that area immunization of the dogs include 3 to 4 months primary immunization can be given bpl inactivated neural vaccine oral recombinant glycoprotein vaccine can be given to the dogs to prevent rabies in dogs so that is about the uh, rabies infection hope you all have understood mainly i will repeat the thing uh, rabies is a zoonotic disease transmitted by the infected animal that the dog bite so it is mainly affect the central nervous system to prevent uh, prevention of the rabies include uh, the post exposure prophylaxis like local wound debridement and uh, local irrigation of the rabies immunoglobulin then vaccination is given to prevent the rabies it is a highly fatal infection can be treated by proper vaccination thank you